Welcome back to another video. I would like to thank you for your unconditional support to the channel. Please do press the like button if you like the video and subscribe to not, not miss any of our future videos that we post every week. Today I will share with you about some of the pharmacological agents that are used in various therapies in orthoptics. We will look at my myotics, cycloplegics and the process of penalization and also the use of botulinum toxin chemodenervation. Let's get started. Myotics. Myotics have been advocated in the treatment of refractive and non-refractive accommodative isotropia. The effectiveness of myotics for treating isotropia lies in the drug's ability to affect the relationship between the accommodative convergence by accommodation ratio. There are also studies that promote the use of long durational topical anticholinesterase agents such as diisopropyl fluorophosphate or ecotheophate iodide. So how do myotics act? Myotic drugs produce an accumulation of acetylcholine at the myoneural synapses of the ciliary muscle which produces a peripheral increase in accommodation without any cortical effort. Thus we reduce the cortical nerve impulse that is needed for accommodation, which results in less convergence output via the AC by A ratio. So basically we relax the convergence and it results in reduction of isodeviation. There are some side effects. It affects the gastrointestinal tract, causes perspiration, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and iris cysts. In case of iris cysts, a concurrent drop of 2.5% phenylephrine hydrochloride is instilled to minimize the cyst development. Cycloplegics and penalization. Now, penalization refers to the attempt to prevent the fixating eye from seeing clearly at a specific distance by pharmacological and optical means. Cycloplegics are used routinely for objective refraction but also constitute an important component of the clinical management of amblyopia called penalization. So what's the mechanism of action of cycloplegics? Cycloplegic drugs such as atropine, homatropine, cyclopentolate, tropicamide are cholinergic antagonists, which means they are those drugs that bind to but do not activate cholinergic receptors, thereby blocking the actions of acetylcholine or cholinergic agonists. Hence, it blocks the effects of acetylcholine at the ciliary body receptor sites and thus the cortical impulse for accommodation is blocked and the emetropic patient's vision will be blurred at near whereas patients with hyperopic ametropias will have blurred vision at all distances. Therefore, in treatment of amblyopia, a long-lasting cycloplegic that is for example atropine can optically occlude or degrade the vision of the normal eye at near. This situation encourages the patient to shift fixation to the amblyopic eye for near vision tasks. There are some other uses of cycloplegics as well like for purpose of encouraging spectacle wear or correcting latent hyperopia. Administration of a cycloplegic drug creates a situation where a patient can no longer accommodate and compensate for the amount of hyperopia, causing the vision to be blurry unless a spectacle correction is worn. There are different types of penalization, near, far, total and alternate penalization are some of the types. Botulinum toxin, chemodenervation. Botulinum toxin type A is potent neurotoxin which is being used in a revolutionary new technique for the treatment of strabismus. Reports in the literature suggest that botulinum toxin therapy is a safe, cost-effective alternative to surgery for particular types of strabismus. So what's the mechanism of action? It is injected into the agonist muscle, that is the medial rectus in isotropia, using an electromyography needle, which monitors muscle activity and ensures that the injection goes directly into the targeted muscle. The injection causes a temporary paralysis which is noticed in 1 to 7 days and is maximal in 1 to 2 weeks and slowly resolves in a 2 to 4 month period. During this period of paralysis, the agonist muscle slightly atrophies and stretches. As this occurs, the antagonist muscle shortens, 
by the process of contracture to the extent that the paralyzed agonist muscle stretched. Botulinum toxin interferes with calcium metabolism in the nerve terminal, which controls the release of acetylcholine. It effectively blocks the release of acetylcholine, functionally denerving the muscle. After two to four months, the injected muscle regains its function, but the prolonged period of paralysis allows contracture and shortening of the antagonist, which is believed to be responsible for the prolonged long-term alterations in ocular alignment. No systemic side effects have been reported, though transient ocular side effects like transient diplopia, uh, hyperdeviations, transient blepharoptosis, occasional subconjunctival hemorrhage are commonly seen. Hope this video was helpful for you. Do stay tuned for many more lecture videos and also comment the themes you would like us to cover. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.